Hello everybody and thank you very much for welcoming me into the BEC week and into your homes. I hope you're safe and well. Today of course is traditionally known as Maundy Thursday and around the world people usually think of this as the uh, celebrating the evening when Jesus had his final supper, the Passover supper with his disciples. People think that the word Maundy might be linked to a Latin word which comes from the idea of command and that's because in John's account, in John 13, in the context of the final supper, Jesus gives them a new command. You'll know it. Here it is. It says this, A new command I give you, love one another. As I have loved you, so you must love one another. And John begins that amazing chapter, chapter 13, with a description of Jesus' own love. He says this, it was just before the Passover festival. Jesus knew that the hour had come for him to leave this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The Passover meal was, of course, a prediction of what was going to follow quite soon. And the Gospel writers explain how Jesus' own death was that expression of the Passover. Jesus who laid down his life for the sheep. Jesus who shed his blood. That was a remarkable expression of this love, which John mentions in verse 1. Having loved them, he loved them completely. He loved them utterly. He loved us to the end. And then the next event in John 13 is the remarkable story of Jesus washing his disciples' feet. Almost shocking in that day, because that was the act of a servant, a menial task. And Jesus is again showing us his love, his servant love, his sacrificial love. Having loved them to the end, he loved them completely. Well, one question I think that comes to our minds when we read John 13 is the extraordinary way in which Jesus demonstrated this love in the context of some of the failure of the disciples. After all, if you read John 13, it includes the fact that Jesus identified who was going to betray him, Judas. And Jesus also says that Peter is going to deny him. And yet even with this group of men around him, one who was going to betray, one who was going to deny, Jesus loved them to the end. Well, as I've said, the Maundy Thursday it comes from the idea of the new command. And embedded in John 13 is the command that we should love one another as Jesus has loved us. I'm sure you ask the question as I do, how is it possible? How could we possibly love others? in the way that Jesus has loved us, the way in which John describes it here in John 13, the way in which over this weekend we celebrate Jesus giving of himself in death. How do we love as Jesus loved us? Well, I think there's a clue in something John also wrote in his first epistle in 1 John 4, where he said, we love because he first loved us. In other words, it's because we have experienced God's love in the Lord Jesus that we are now able to express love to one another. A similar phrase is used by Paul in 2 Corinthians 5 and verse 14 where he says, The love of Christ compels us. He writes that because of what Jesus has done, Christ died for us. Now we've experienced that love and this becomes the compulsing force, the compulsive force. It becomes the motivating power in our lives. The love of Christ compels us. So on this Monday, Thursday, as we pray this evening, uh, together as a church and for God's people around the world, we remember this command, love one another as Christ has loved you. And we know that that's possible because God has shown his love to us in Jesus because the Holy Spirit makes that love real to us and therefore that becomes the motivating power for us to love one another. The reason why it's important is one other verse, the verse 35, which comes after this new command. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. This will be the authentic evidence that we really are Jesus' followers. So God bless you and have a joyful Easter.